Am I the a-hole for telling my daughters that I made a mistake by choosing to stay in their lives? My ex-wife and I got divorced 14 years ago. It was due to infidelity on her part. Our daughters were 9 and 7 at the time. The divorce was messy. She moved in with her affair partner and ended up with primary custody and I got every other weekend. It was a disaster from the very start as the kids did not respond well to the changes. I tried to have a good co-parenting thing going, but little did I know that my daughters were being turned against me. They would be angry and sullen each time they would visit and refuse to talk about what was wrong. Tantrums, screaming, cursing became the norm, and that's when they were not totally withdrawn. They were being fed complete lies about me, how I didn't love them, how I was going to leave them for another family, etc. It didn't improve with time, and in their teens, they costed me two very serious relationships with just the most venomous behavior. They didn't even want to visit me anymore, but I insisted that they do. I don't know if that was a mistake or not because they pretty much cut me off when they turned 18, and the only time they'd visit was to ask for money. I thought things would improve as they got older and saw through all the lies, but sadly it hasn't. I think it never will, and I'm just done at this point. At the start of this year, they'd come to my house to ask for more money. When I refused, they yelled at me again and said they wished I wasn't their father. Something broke inside me and I told them I wished I had just walked away from them that if I hadn't stayed in their lives, maybe I would have had a natural shot at a happy life. Maybe they would have too. They looked shocked, and then screamed and cried and left. Haven't seen them since. No visits, no phone calls, nothing. It fills me with incredible guilt, but I almost feel relieved that they're not around anymore. It was a terrible thing to say, but I can't help but feel like there was truth in it. So, am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not a day-hole. Tragic, but not a day-hole. I wish you can find something that gives you happiness, though. No visits, no phone calls, nothing. It fills me with incredible guilt, but I almost feel relieved that they're not around anymore. I'd say not caring that weight around is cause for happiness. Not a day-hole. Not really happiness. Relief, maybe. Happiness will take some work, I suspect. Not a day-hole. No doubt, very common. I used to think fathers that walk away were deadbeats. Now I know most don't stand a chance if the mother decides to demonize him. My mom tried to do that with us. Just subtle things to make us dislike our dad. Thing is, I'm autistic, and I don't do subtle, so it never worked on me. Haha, <laughs> joke's on you, mom. I'm also on a spectrum and don't do subtle. The older I get, the more I understand subtleties. But I still make people spell things out, so I don't get totally off base. Not a day home. There's only so much crap and mistreatment a person can take, even if it is from their children. Be glad and enjoy your newfound freedom. Get back into dating and stop feeling guilty. You stuck around when others would have walked along back. You did nothing wrong. Your crazy acts filled them with poison, but now it seems your girls are ending up like her. I doubt they will see the light anytime soon. You did the best you can. Be proud. Not a day home. Sorry I've gone through this. Maybe it would help you move on by writing out your story slash your perspective. Cold hard truths throughout, responsibilities for any of your own actions, etc. After it's done, then you can decide if you want to give them a copy, or try once to get together and ask them to sit while you read it to them, or even just feel better about giving up and walking away. Could even ensure they get a copy when you pass. Again, so sorry. Or just write and tell them that no matter what, you will always love them. You're sorry that they turned away from you after the divorce, and there was nothing you could do to stop the lies. And that if they truly ever want a fresh start, to let you know. I believe that if you go ahead and make that gesture, it will allow you to not close the door, but to walk on past it instead and start taking care of yourself. You need some healing, man. Not a day-hole, of course. Next story. Am I the a-hole for embarrassing my aunt? I'm child-free, relationship-free, and intimacy-free. This is important for the story. I have no problems with people who have these things, and will fully support people struggling with fertility issues as much as my body autonomy will allow. The only thing I won't do is to be a surrogate. Me, 29 female, and my parents were at a family party, and my nosy aunt Caroline asked, so when are you going to get married and have kids? It's no secret that I want neither, because I want to be happy on my terms. When I reminded her that I wanted neither, 
She went off that I wasn't a real woman if I didn't do these things. But I just rolled my eyes having heard it all before. Then came this gem. What about all the other women who can't have kids? Like your Aunt Jessie. You're so selfish. Aunt Jessie and her husband have tried to get pregnant for years. And after a few failed rounds of IVF, she just decided to have a hysterectomy and not deal with it anymore. Her husband has been supportive of her throughout the whole thing, and 20 years later is still going strong. I just laughed, pulled out my phone and called Jessie, who lives a few states away and asked her about what she thought of child-free women. That's their business. Why are you asking? Caroline said to think about you when I say I don't want kids, and that I'm selfish and should pity people like you. This earned a gasp from the rest of the party, and Caroline going ghost white. Jessie was having none of it. Jesus freaking Christ, Caroline. Let the woman be happy. She's the only person to help me after my surgery while you said you had better things to do. Shut the hell up and let me speak for myself. I thanked Jessie and hung up. Caroline was so humiliated she was crying, and she just left the party. The younger people thought it was much overdue that Caroline got put in her place, but the older ones thought I was being petty. So, am I the a-hole for embarrassing my aunt? Now for the top comments. Well, well, well. If it isn't the consequences of her own actions making her cry. Not today, Hall. And quite frankly, well done you for shooting that crap down. I do have a son whom I love very much, but my sister hates kids. It's life and people should learn to mind their own dang business. I have four niblets. 12 female, 7 male, 7 male, and 5 male. The girl is my best friend's kid. The boys are my brothers. Dad would gladly die so none of them would ever be sad. Sounds like you were the perfect aunt. Kudos for not letting your family bull for your choices. Not today, Hall. And how on earth would it help Jess if you did have kids? For Pete's sake. I'm so glad I'm past menopause and no longer get these questions myself. I always wondered why people say that. Like me having kids could make her feel worse about herself. I wouldn't put it past this woman to say something like, well, if you're not using your uterus, you should at least loan it out to someone who will. That is the one thing I refuse to do, be a surrogate mother. I can understand wanting kids off your own, but it's my body that will be going through major changes. Not day haul. It has previously been the case that family just let people be horrible because that is how they are. I think it's bullcrap. Not day haul. Assuming you knew your Aunt Jessie stands and weren't going to hurt her by involving her, all you did was call someone out on hurtful misinformation. It sounds like this is not a new or unusual occurrence based on Jessie's reaction. Your Aunt Caroline needs to learn to think before she speaks, and to just stay silent on a host of topics including someone's personal choices. I knew. She's the first one I told when I was 16, and she didn't write me off. That's your choice, sweetheart. If that's how you want to live, I'm behind you 100%. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for kicking my dad out of my apartment after he threw out my food? I, female 26, moved from my parents after I turned 18. My relationship with them, especially my mom, was terrible at the time, but over the years we managed to fix it, more or less. I visit them two to three times per year, and once in a while one of them comes to my place. Recently it was my dad, male 51, who was visiting me. In my late teens and early 20s, I was suffering from an eating disorder. Actually, one of the reasons why I moved was because my parents didn't understand it was a real problem. After meeting that right psychologist, I'm mostly okay. I'm trying to eat healthy and actually have lots of fun with preparing meals for myself. My kitchen is always full of vegetables, fruits, sources of healthy fat like fishes or poultry meat, etc. Nonetheless, I'm still getting nervous when I have to eat unhealthy meals for too long. I'm working on it. For my parents, real food must be deeply fried with a ton of salt, or at least be a fast food. When my dad came to me, the plan was for him to stay a week. He had to make his own breakfast, or work morning shift, but I was going to make dinners and suppers for both of us. Right after seeing my kitchen and then after a first meal I cooked for him, I prepared pasta with chicken and zucchini. He started complaining. He said it's no wonder I look so malnourished if I'm eating this way. I have been maintaining the correct weight for the last four years, but for him, correct weight is when somebody's at least slightly chubby. Then he said he wants real food while he's staying at my apartment. I told him where the nearest grocery shop is and that he can buy whatever he wants. I'm eating healthy, but I don't really care what he does eat. 
made a supper. He didn't complain anymore, so I decided the problem is solved. The next day came back from work and found that he threw out all my food he decided unsuitable and instead bought pre-cooked food, tons of red meat and sausages, full bag of sweets and chips, and, for some reason, few kilos of potatoes. I started to cry. I don't earn a lot, and big part of my earnings is spent of food, but he told me it's for my own good, since evidently I'm still not on my right mind. He was referring to my previous eating disorder, and should stop being so fuzzy and eat like a normal person. I packed all food he bought in bags, carried them and his luggage to the corridor, and told him to get out of my house. The train to my hometown leaves every hour or two, so I was sure he won't spend the night at a station. He called me an entitled witch, but eventually left. My dad told the whole family what happened, and most of them say I'm overreacting and I'm heartless because I kicked my own father out. My mom told me neither she nor dad will contact me again until I apologize. Taking care of my ED took me a few years, and even now I'm not fully out of the woods. I don't want to lose my balance again because of my dad's tantrums, but I also don't want my parents out of my life. Should I apologize to him? Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Not the a-hole. He was mistreating you, so you protected yourself. Look at your dad's behavior when you want to know why you have an eating disorder. My mom told me neither she nor dad will contact me again until I apologize. Do not do that. He needs to apologize, not you. But you are better off without these horrible a-holes anyway. I hope he thinks this is a problem. This is not a problem. This is the opposite of a problem. The problem just solves itself. Keep it that way. I hope you shouldn't talk to either of them until they pay back for the food with interest. Not today, Hull. Not at the slightest. If your parents really wanted to help you, they would try to educate themselves about Edie, and they had plenty of opportunities in the last eight years. Also, how dare you throw out food that you bought in your home, with your own money? The fact that he's trying to excuse his behavior by commenting on Opie's past eating disorder is beyond repair. I would genuinely never talk to him again if that was my dad. Not day hall. Definitely not day hall. He comes to your house and tells you that your healthy diet is bad, then throws out a bunch of food you'd obviously spent money on. He could have easily bought that food for himself without throwing all of your food out. He just decided to be a major a hall. You had every right to kick him out. Absolutely not, day hall. This is what threw it completely over the line. Throwing out your food to try to force you to eat the way he wants you to, when he could have just gotten whatever garbage he wanted and left your stuff alone. I give Opie a standing ovation for standing up for herself and kicking him out immediately. Never apologize for protecting yourself that way. He could have set you back years. I personally would not put any additional effort into maintaining a relationship with them. It sounds as if they bring nothing but bad feelings. Last story is titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my stepfather that he isn't my dad after he bought me a $3,200 gift? I'm 20 female and my dad passed away six years ago, and my mother remarried less than a year later. It was a horrible experience, and at the time I didn't know how to manage my feelings. I never liked the man she married, and kept my distance over the years. However, he began buying my siblings and I lavish gifts from the start. My siblings loved the new lifestyle, while I moved out as soon as I could. Fast forward to the present. I'm financially independent and live by myself. My siblings live at their house and I don't see them often. A couple of days ago, my mother and her husband had a pre-anniversary dinner, and once again he had a bunch of gifts for all of us. He bought me a gift worth $3,200, the most expensive one out of all of them. He said that he hoped that we can work towards mending our relationship. My mother kept asking me if I like it, and even told me to say thank you. There was a lot of pressure, and quite frankly it was irritating. So I basically told him that it's a waste of money, that it's irresponsible and stupid to spend that much on a gift for someone who doesn't even care about you. And I told him that he's not my dad, and should stop acting like these gestures will make a difference. Absolute chaos ensued. My mother screamed at me and told me to get out. My siblings were pissed too, and called me a spoiled brat amongst other things. They said that I'm always being cuddled by our stepfather, and that I don't even deserve anything nice. Over the last few days, I've been called immature, petty, obnoxious, ungrateful, disrespectful, cruel, attention-seeking, etc. 
My mother even said that my attitude is completely unattractive to men. That'll be forever single if I continue being so heartless. So, am I the a-hole? Yikes. You're the a-hole. Sounds like you took all of your frustrations from your dad's death and your mom moving on too quick. In your opinion, out on this poor guy. You're not obligated to like him. And you definitely shouldn't be pressured to treat him like a new father. But couldn't you at least treat him like a human being? I'm sorry, but a person who comes into the life of a grieving child and tries to buy his way into a relationship isn't exactly innocent. I would say not today, Hull. He made a choice to give the gift, and everyone around was pressuring her to thank him. He didn't intend to give a heartfelt gift, but rather put her on the spot. I think I didn't know how to manage my feelings is a good place to start. It sounds like you haven't gotten over the death of your father, or how you feel like everyone else in your life has replaced him with your stepfather. Have you been to therapy for any of this? I'm sorry that you are going through this, and it is still so painful. Gentle, everyone sucks here. You are 20, and it's time for you to take care for yourself and your emotions, and not let all the hurt of this continue to hurt the people around you. They are allowed to be happy and love your stepfather. You are allowed to have your feelings, but making a point to demean him and be disrespectful at every turn isn't going to be helpful. And it seems no one has reached out to help you. They have been really crappy since the latest incident. Again, I'm sorry for your loss. Take care. Thanks a lot. I've never been to therapy, but we'll start next month. You're the a-hole, kinda. I imagine losing a parent at 14 is devastating, and a feeling that he is trying to replace your father from everyone is awful. He likely thinks that gifts are a way to show that he cares and wants a relationship. You have shown that you don't respond to this, so he should stop and find another way of trying to connect. You don't have to be all in, but being cordial shows respect to your mom and family who does love him. He never has to be your dad, but he is a part of your family's life, so not being a jerk is important. If you haven't gone through counseling of some sort to work through some of these issues, I think it may be very beneficial. There is clearly a lot of pain, but being mean to people is only going to leave you alone in the end.